Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We're going to be experimenting with a new app I found today. It's called uh, Drone Pan. So the idea behind this is uh, you take panoramic images with the drone. So we're uh, fighting a little bit of weather here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try taking it up and uh, try getting some uh, panos of, of the area here real quick. So uh, I've already launched, I've already checked hover, I'm good to go, so I'm going to take this up. I've already got the, uh, the pano set. I want to take this out this way. And I'm going to take it up. And now I want to yaw back around. And I have it up there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I've already programmed, I'm going to show some screenshots of this. And I'm going to hit the button and it's going to hopefully start the panorama sequence. And uh, unable to set gimbal altitude. So that's a little bit of a problem. Let's go ahead and see if we can't reduce some settings here. Panorama stopped. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try adjusting maximum upward pitch. I'm just going to say horizontal on the gimbal. And I'm going to say save. And then I'm going to try starting it again and see what happens. And it says panorama starting. And it looks like it's moving it. So um, I don't know if you can see this uh, screen. So you can see it's moving. Moving the gimbal around. It's definitely doing a lot of gyrations up there. So you can kind of see me down below. Uh, I'm not sure if it says what number it's on of all these panoramas. Because I'm going to try bringing this into Microsoft Ice. And so uh, we're going to see how that goes. There I am down there again. Interesting. So like I say, I had a little bit of an issue setting the gimbal, but now that I, I turned that setting off and just said horizontal, it's allowed it, uh, instead of the 30 degree pitch on the gimbal, I don't know if you can see it up there, it's uh, going around taking it. So uh, again, this is a free app. Um, the de Primarily it's out on iOS, just, so just for Apple users. The dev has released an early beta for Android, which is, which is out. I haven't had it. Well, obviously, this is the first time I'm trying it, period. Um, he's got some other interesting things I'm going to cover in another video in the future uh, out there. But I wanted to try this because uh, as I've done a couple videos with the panos, I, I'm finding them very interesting to mess around with. And so I wanted to kind of get out and just give this a test to get some working frames to, to see how things go. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how to tell the uh, completion rate of this. I wish I could get screen recording to really show this. I don't know if you guys are, are getting the gist of this in the hat cam or not. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm getting it. It's, it's pretty low glare. It's uh, uh, it's a pretty low glare day out here today. Now I didn't set auto exposure bracketing. That's something else I'll probably play with in a future video. This video again, I just simply want to, uh, you know, take a look at the basic application itself, see how it works, and see what results of images we get out of it. So uh, again, it's taking quite a few pictures. Unable to set gimbal altitude, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But it seems to have completed its run. Alright, so completed pano there, so it did, did have a bit of an error, so I'm not sure uh, what to expect. So, uh, so I'm going to bring the copter, the copter back, and then we're going to go back onto the computer and take a look at what images we got from this and, uh, you know, what we can do with them. Hey, we're back at the computer now. So uh, we've come in from the field and I have the uh, SD card in the computer. So if we take a quick look at the SD card, uh, what we have is in, in DCIM, we have 100 media, which is typical for the Spark. So it's placing all the uh, images as I would expect 
under this folder rather than the panorama folder because it doesn't know its panoramas. So from this uh, round, we have collected 45 images. So what we want to do is I have ICE open in the background, the image composite editor from Microsoft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here for new panorama images, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select uh, all these 45 images from the uh, SD card, and I'm going to click open and it's going to do a little bit of magic. So now here it's loaded all these. Now I'm really not sure how to tell if I, if I have all of them because if you remember when we were in the field we got a couple gimbal errors and timeout errors and things like that. So I'm going to want to do some more experimentation in the future with this but I, I find this very interesting. So I'm really interested also to see what we come out with uh, regarding this. So now if I go to Stitch uh, what it's going to do is we're just going to fast forward past this piece because it's going to spend a lot of time I'm aligning uh, 45 rather high resolution images and then and compositing them. So we'll come back when this piece is done. Okay, here we are back. So uh, we've got the image up on the screen, the flickering, it's just a bit of our uh, screen capture software. Uh, so you notice we have a few holes in the image over here and here. Um, and one of the things I noticed that this isn't the best at, at centering these in the image when you click the center up here for some reason. Also, it attempts to, um, or believes it should be a spherical configuration too. And, and I think this is because it's wanting to create a 360 degree panorama, which is rather interesting. Again, I'm interested in experimenting with this a little bit more in the future. Um, but if, if, we, if we play around with this and the different effects we, we get, it gets kind of interesting. Uh, here with regards to some of this and how we can kind of spin through this. Um, because actually, if you notice behind us, we actually do get a fairly good in a transver transverse cylindrical format, uh, some pretty interesting stuff. And notice it's right above us that we really just, you know, are not getting it because we even have the, the little pond out here in the back. And so this really surprises me, and we can actually kind of turn things upside down a little bit compared to uh, where we're going. And uh, I'm not sure how quite to, to adjust this terrain a little bit here. Anyways, so one of the pieces that I'm going to leave it in this projection, but well, let's, let's take a look at a couple other ones before we just go and change it. So, you know, and again, here it here is from above. Uh, so it's done a very interesting job in capturing uh, images. I mean, this this is a very interesting image just in itself. Uh, you know, part of it would have to be kind of cleaned up because notice the trees pulling here, uh, but that's okay. And then the tree is kind of pulling over here. It's kind of a little bit comical. Uh, but again, you, we we can tilt it around this way and. Uh, Kind of pull it up and you see the cell phone towers off over there uh, and we can kind of pull this up and we're kind of back but look how stretched out my car is my car is not quite that long so i actually think this is a probably a more interesting one and, and if we just scroll way way out this is this is what we have and that's why i'm wondering if some of those pictures where it failed aren't for this over here uh, that's why i gotta try a little bit more but i'm very interested in, in moving to the next piece so let's go ahead and crop the image so it's it's projecting the panorama here so this is actually will happen pretty quick so once it projects the pan projects i'll spit that out the panorama i got up early this morning uh, this is rather rather interesting. So what happens since this is mostly sky? Let's go ahead and click the auto complete button and see what we get as a result of this. So I'll probably speed this up. This might take a bit. Okay, we're back. So one of the things you might have noticed um, in the uh, time lapse, if you will, of the um, autocomplete was it kept it, it crashed and actually I tried it a couple times uh, off camera and it kept crashing so what I had to do is go back to spherical which is what you see here and it did successfully autocomplete it and it, it 
did a very nice job. So I'm actually a little bit impressed with this uh, for the amount of imagery that both the copter, the Spark uh, collected, uh, as well as the job that ICE actually did. Now, I'm a little bit elongated here. If you take a look at my car as an example and you look at how some of the trees and stuff are pulled at the center, but as far as really getting a pretty big swath, it, it actually did a fairly good job. I wouldn't quite say that this is 360 degrees. I'd say, though, this is uh, getting around pretty close uh, to 360 degrees. So, um, again, I think a very interesting results. Now, again, I'm not sure. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more, and I'm also going to try it on the Phantom 3 uh, also and see what kind of results because the Phantom 3 doesn't have any type of pano capabilities. Uh, built into the software. None that I'm overly aware of. I might be corrected by somebody out there um, in the old DJI uh, Go app. Uh, so, uh, whereas the Spark has it. So, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to try experimenting both ways. So, I'm going to try, um, you know, for example, doing a, a 180, rotating at 90 degrees, do another a 180. In other words, do four 180s and take those 180s and see if I can get those four 180s and get a 360. And the reason I could do, I'm going to do four is I think it's just easier turning by 90 degrees each time than trying to, you know, turn in thirds or something like that. Because again, if you just did one 180 looking forward, one 180 do, going backwards, technically you would have 360 degrees of view, but I don't think there'll be enough overlap in the fields on the sides. So that's where I think doing four uh, would work a lot better. So anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, also, subscribe button's coming up. Uh, and don't forget, let me know in the comments what you're thinking about for lunch, and we'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.